It's been almost a week since the A's announced their plans to go to Sacramento in a windy, wet, gloomy press conference at Sutter Health Park, what will be their new home potentially for the next three seasons. And there's been an avalanche of bad press since. We're going to run through some of those comments here shortly. But first, I just want to point out. Doesn't it seem like the A's sort of just yeet their way into scenarios without actually really having anything signed? Like you may remember, they announced they were going to play at the Peralta Community College site near Lake Merritt before the Peralta Community College even approved it. That set them back a year. The A's dropped their entire term sheet with the city of Oakland for Howard Terminal before the city was even ready for them or even knew they were going to drop it. The A's announced Howard Terminal before they had an EIR or port priority use cleared. They announced a binding deal in Las Vegas at the Wild Wild West site, then about two weeks later changed it to the Tropicana site. They announced their entire deal in Las Vegas before having everything lined up and ready to go, like a financing package or any of those other things. And now they've announced that they're moving to Sacramento prior to even bothering to trademark Sacramento A's or Sacramento Athletics or really even having a plan in place, any signed documents, other than Vivek just saying, go ahead, come here. No lease, no, no rent, uh, just come on, we'll figure it out later. Uh, so yeah, there is a trend of the A's jumping into things before they've actually gotten the deal done, signed on the dotted line. Right? Like if the owners even approve Sacramento, I know the MLBPA hasn't approved Sacramento. Maybe the owners don't have to approve Sacramento. Anyways, a lot more questions than answers as per usual. All right, on to some of the backlash. Let's start with Tim Kuhn of ESPN, who just dropped an amazing article today detailing the whole back and forth between the city and the A's and everything that led to Sacramento. And I can say I read this whole article top to bottom. I highly recommend it. And I was involved in a lot of these things. I was hearing a lot of the same things. Everything that Tim reported, spot on in this thing. It is fantastic. Here's one interesting excerpt. The city was within 97 million. The original extension fee was a history rhymes clapback of providing Fisher with everything he sought for his $12 billion Howard Terminal mini city. Yeah, you read that right. As I reported right after the deal fell apart way back when, when they announced Las Vegas, the A's were within $97 million of having the entire Howard Terminal project paid for. Crazy how low that number is when you think of the entire future of one baseball franchise and how little most players are getting compared to that number now. $97 million is like not even one free agent contract these days. It's pretty wild. But what I didn't notice when I initially got the terms leaked to me uh, ahead of the last meeting with Oakland and the A's, 97 million was what they were asking to extend the lease for three years. The exact same number. How poetic. Tim also writes, Vivek is definitely bright. One sorcerer requested anonymity said. He made an assessment. Vegas will eventually fall apart and wherever the team is at that moment is where it will stay. He's not the only one who believes that. Kings owner Vivek Ranadive did indeed tell me after they announced this deal that he believes Sacramento will be in pole position for a Major League Baseball team based on this deal he made. I think he's right to some extent. The issue is he didn't get any assurances that Sacramento would be in pole position. So really all he got was the A's for three years and maybe more depending on if Vegas goes well or if they expand. Uh, there's no guarantees and I can say for sure there are a lot of motivated people out in the Bay Area ready for Major League Baseball. Vivek will have to get in line if he wants to keep a team or even get an expansion. So he should have got some assurances which he did not. Now let's move on to another article, this one from Ken Rosenthal, detailing how the A's are going to ramp up their spending when they get to Las Vegas, and that ramp up may start in Sacramento. To that I say, <laughs> show me any evidence that points out that the A's will actually invest. They said the same thing about Oakland. If we get a ballpark, we'll invest there too. It's what they say everywhere they go, because they're trying to win people over and get them to sign onto these deals. Here's what Ken Rosenthal wrote. The Oak Sack Vegas A's keep promising to build towards a top tier payroll over the next several years, which raises some obvious questions. Should anyone trust owner John Fisher to spend? Parentheses, of course not, but more on that shortly. 
And later, Rosenthal wrote, In reality, Fisher's history tells us he is unlikely to engage in deficit spending and invest in the team anything more than he is taking in, if that. Until the A's get to Vegas, if they get to Vegas, if they draw in Vegas, if, 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 a significant payroll increase seems rather far-fetched. Ken Rosenthal hits the nail on the head there. And when you have guys of this stature, Rosenthal, Tim Kuhn, and even Buster Olney starting to leak out information, it tells you that the owners are frustrated because these guys are dialed in at the highest levels. Now check out what Buster Olney wrote on X. Within other organizations, there is a lot of disgust now with how the A's have handled the ballpark situation, especially when there's no actual ballpark plan settled in Las Vegas. And there is an assumption the A's will tank in the next few years because their revenue stream will be down to a trickle. This makes us all look bad, said one person. Now, like I said, if guys like Olney are saying this, it's coming from very high important places. So keep an eye out for comments like that. And they seem to be everywhere. Even on the Rich Eisen show, who is just appalled by everything going on so far. But they call Williams baseball sport. the show for a reason. Because it's not the minor leagues. It's Major League Baseball. And you don't play Major League Baseball in minor league facilities. And if you do, you don't brag about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's going to be a ton of people who go to this park and will be excited to see Aaron Judge okay. come in and hopefully root for the A's, which, by the way, that's what they're called. Yeah, They're not going to call them the Sacramento A's. <laughs> they're not going to call them the Oakland A's. They're just calling them the A's. Okay. They will have no hmm. geographic name attached to them. Something I pointed out to Vivek Ranadive, the Kings owner, when he said he wasn't going to play second fiddle to anybody for Major League Baseball, I said, well, isn't it interesting then that they're not putting Sacramento on the team's name? Or maybe they just hadn't filed for the trademarks yet. Now they've done that. I mean, what is it going to say in the standings when you look at the paper? Just A's? Just athletics? Sacramento athletics? What's it really going to say? It's just weird. Sean Doolittle, obviously one of the favorites out here, played in Sacramento. Also played in Oakland. Uh, obviously, he came through the River Cats quickly on his ascent up to the major leagues. Uh, he had this to say to our friends at Foul Territory TV. It's heartbreaking, man. It's infuriating. Um, I feel awful for the fans. Um, I feel um, I feel I feel really bad for the people that work in that organization. Um, you know, because once you get under ownership, um, you know the the people who's who are working for that club behind the scenes, the in the training room, in the clubhouses, uh, the, you know, the the um, the ushers, the security guards, the people that work at the stadium, um, you know, like they're in limbo right now. And that's why so much of this process has been hard for me too. You know, having to report out that I'd heard that there were going to be layoffs within the A's organizations, a staff reduction, because they're gonna use the Kings and the Rivercats front offices to help do a lot of the jobs that they currently do in Oakland. Uh, the ushers, all the people at the Oakland Coliseum that won't have game days to work. Uh, that's why it's incredibly important that the Alameda County Board of Supervisors finalizes this deal that was already unanimously passed by the JPA, the Coliseum Authority, to get the roots and soul at the Coliseum in 2025. And heck, maybe some ballers games in there too. Uh, maybe we can try to salvage some of those jobs. But for A's front office employees, uh, you know, Dave Cavill admitted to me there will be a reduction in workforce. And that's incredibly sad. And now you also have to think about Vegas. You may have heard in some of those updates that I put out that a lot of people seem pretty skeptical about the whole situation. That's not exactly for me to say. I still think they're going to end up there. Uh, but they're going to have to show their work. They're going to have to get things knocked out to stop these people from casting doubts on the entire situation. One major reason to have doubts, schools over stadiums, the teachers group suing against SB1 to try to get those $380 million in funds off the books for the A's. Uh, they were in the state Supreme Court. They heard their case. Uh, there should be a decision soon about whether or not they can start collecting signatures to get a referendum on the ballot. If a referendum goes on the ballot, it's not going to be popular. According to recent polling, 52% oppose public money going towards a baseball stadium 
for the Las Vegas A's. And in addition to all the negative press, this avalanche of information coming out from all the top people in baseball that are knocking this entire thing, the A's going to play in a minor league park, becoming the triple A's. I was driving the other day, I saw a big cell flag on a freeway overpass. And apparently those things are starting to pop up all over the place. Remember the Oakland 68's Oaklandish last dive bar threw a big protest tailgate on opening night and there were a bunch of those flags given out there. Apparently people are now popping them up all over overpasses. <laughs> Outside the team offices, uh, I have a feeling that's gonna be something that catches on probably all over the place. So the A's are still on the road. Obviously there weren't a ton of answers that came out of that press conference in Sacramento on that gloomy day, which we talked about here. Uh, but there is an absolute avalanche of bad press coming out and I don't think it's gonna stop anytime soon. We'll see what happens when the A's return back to the Bay Area. Maybe I'll go out there, try to talk to some of the guys, but it's wild. You know, positive comments few and far between these days in relation to this group, and that's something that's on them. They're gonna have to try to fix that. I would suggest accountability, more information, uh, embracing people in a genuine way, uh, but we'll see what happens going forward. Uh, like I said, four more years of this nonsense at least before they get shovels in the ground and a stadium built in Las Vegas. Don't forget to like and subscribe.